Welcome back to Thermal Mermaid and today we're going to start lesson two in the Thermal Mermaid soap making course. In lesson one we've talked all about soap making in six videos but we didn't make a lot of soap just the basic simple bar and we discussed all the things that you need to do before you start making. Well now we're going to change that. In lesson two we have a 13 part video collection with 10 recipes and this lesson corresponds to chapter two in the soap making companion. Now if you want a copy of this you can find it on the website at the link below. This book it's also available in paperback and hardcover on Amazon and also at Barnes and Noble and you can get this on request at your local retailer. But if you want a PDF for free you can download that below. Now today's video is just an introduction of lesson two so that you get an idea of how I've organized it and why. So if you're eager to get the entire collection of the beginner cold process soap recipes in lesson two, be sure to click the subscribe button and also that notification bell so that you can watch the entire videos in the whole series. And with that, let's begin. Lesson two begins our journey into cold process soap making. Now we're really ready to get started. All the recipes and demonstrations in lesson two are dedicated to learning the cold process technique. Cold process means that the soap is made, designed, and cured on the countertop. Now this is mostly done at room temperature and there's no additional heat applied to the soap during this time. Cold process is compared to hot process, which is demonstrated in the next chapter. Where hot process is cooked while cold process is not cooked. Cold process is usually described as a simpler technique than hot process. During the cold process method, the soap needs a minimum set curing time of six weeks, which could extend longer depending on the combination of oils being used. One of the reasons that artisans prefer the cold process method is because of the beautiful vibrant colors that can be produced. And you can get more detail out of your designs than you can with hot process cooked soap because the texture of the soap batter is different. This 12 part lesson is going to take you through some of the basic terminology and troubleshooting when using the cold process technique. Everything you find in this part of the course is designed especially for beginners and it deals with the very first questions that you have when you start soap making and it expands to the questions that start to come up once you practice a few recipes. Exercises 1 through 12 are set up in a specific way. In lesson 2.1, we'll start off with a basic standard recipe. This recipe directly addresses the most common question that I've answered over the years. How do I make my bar of soap white? Now, as a new soap maker, this isn't typically your first question. This usually comes up after you've had a few projects under your belt and you start to realize that nearly all the soap you make comes out yellow before you add any type of colorant. However, this is the most frequent question and I'm going to start right out of the gate with this recipe. You see, the base color of your soap depends heavily on the combination of oils you choose in each recipe. The most frequent question that I get in messages is how do I make my soap white right from the start? So we're going to start with the very first recipe with a bright base that cures to a white bar of soap. In lesson 2.2, we'll move on to another basic standard recipe. This is a more common recipe. It's a more traditional oil blend that's very easy to work with. The recipe is just a bit more advanced than the last with an easy to use popular fragrance and a very simple color technique. Now, Wedged between the recipes in lesson two are excerpts with terms and definitions that describe some of the phenomenon that happened during the saponification process. You'll need to know what's going on in your recipe as it's becoming soap so that you can control the effects. You'll learn things like trace, gel, and insulating, glycerin rivers and soda ash, ricing and the DOS, and you'll see the visual examples in lesson 2.2 through 2.4. We'll show you what these things look like. Now these are all things that you do need to learn and experience as a beginning soap maker. Lessons 2.5 through 2.12 are all unique recipes. These eight recipes are organized in a very deliberate way. I'll show you what kinds of designs that you can make with soap batter at different thicknesses and textures. We'll start off with recipes that typically have a very thick trace. 
and as we move down the lessons, the soap batter becomes thinner for a longer period of time. The designs get wispy and more delicate, and as we progress, the recipes will be crafted so that we can get a more complicated design. Remember, these are still all beginner level designs, but they move from the simplest to more complicated as we progress. The goal in lesson two is that by the time we finish all the recipes in this lesson, you'll discover the answer to the biggest question that I had when I was making soap for that very first year of learning. And that was, how do I control my soap batter depending on the design that I want to create? So let's dive in. 